Welcome to the conversation here on Scene TV. Of course, it's on Catch as well. My name is George Davis. This week, I'm going to talk about a topic that is not sexy by any means, but it is vitally important to the functioning of any organized society. Jamaica is an organized society, and because of its importance, I have asked to join me today the chairman of the National Solid Waste Management Authority, Dennis Chung. Dennis, welcome to the program, sir. Yeah, man. Thank you, George. Good, good, good. <laughs> I read, well... I read some time ago you voicing frustration at the slow pace with which privatization of the Riverton City dump. Mm, yeah. I'm almost tempted to say <laughs> landfill because for so many years we were calling it a landfill, well, but it we wasn't. We call it a disposal site. Well, there you go. <laughs> Fine. Where that was concerned. And I think I want to start there because mm. the issue of the privatization, the work of the privatization team is ongoing before we even get there. Where privatization is concerned, there are many definitions of privatization. From the perspective of the Riverton City disposal site, what version of privatization would be best for that facility? Um, well, there, there, there are a few approaches that people are looking at. I mean, there, there were over 40 expressions of interest, right? So there is significant interest in it. Some people want to do waste energy. Some people want to do a, a clean landfill with recycling. Mm -hmm. Those are basically the two main variants that people want to do. Um, but either one of them, there, there's money in it. Yes. I mean, the fact is that I saw one proposal, someone wanted to invest a billion US dollars. So it's significant investments you're talking about. Um, my, I'm a little disappointed about the, the, the pace mm -hmm. at which we've approached it because of the significant interest that's out there. Yes. I mean, people calling you every day, they have something that they want to do. Um, it started about two years before I became chairman mm -hmm. in 2015. Yes. So it's happening for about six years now. Yes. You know, and, and when you think about it, you have a process in place for six years with people wanting to invest up to a billion US. It means that it's an execution problem you're talking about. Yes. We certainly, at the NSWMA, we are looking forward to it and we're ready because Whatever version that comes, it means that you're going to have a proper landfill. So you won't have what we have now, which is basically a dump slash disposal site where you just take the garbage and, and dump it there. And you have right now at Riverton is over 40 odd years of garbage being piled on each other. That's what we want to move away from. Uh, so I think that, and my thought has always been that what we should do is look at the people who have expressed an interest. Um, just redo an RFP, ask people to resubmit bids because they're so old now. Yes. Invite new people. And, you know, I think it's something that can be done in short order. But why is it, someone would ask, that the best option for the Riverton City facility is just one of the areas that you control? Mm -hmm. Why is it that the government itself with the help of private interests, can't private interests not under the umbrella of privatization, but why can't the government do with it what someone in the private sector would take it and do? It's a lot of money. It's, it's a whole lot of money it's going to take. <clears throat> um, I don't know that the government will have that sort of money. And then to operate it, my personal view is that I don't think that the government should be involved in that sort of operations. I don't even think the government should be in the business of waste collection, mm. right? So what we want to do is not only privatize the, the landfills or the, the disposal sites, but also privatize the collection, mm -hmm. just like it is done in other countries. Yes. You know, um, how we actually compensate people is another thing. For example, one model is that we actually spend a certain amount of money. Should we be giving some of that money to? A, a, a private organization, mm -hmm. you know, to carry that out. Yes. And then what we are doing now is we are preparing for that day and NSWMA is going to move towards just being a regulatory agency, mm -hmm. just like the OUR. Yeah. But, but, but someone mm -hmm. would say, look, in some respects, while it's not, it doesn't meet the classic definition of a public good, like, say, education as an example, garbage collection is somewhat of a public good. Yeah. And the yielding that responsibility to a private interest will bring with it certain difficulties from the, from the perspective of the public that wouldn't necessarily be there when the government was because you'd expect that there is a, there's a right for your waste. You have a right for your waste to be 
collected right, right. and disposed of in a, in, a, in, a, in a safe manner. But if a private enterprise is undertaking that or has responsibility for that, they may not exercise the responsibility in the same way that the government would do. Um, you, can, you can write that into the, the agreement. For example, if you look at JPS, for example, mm -hmm. um, JPS actually is a private company, but they also have a sort of social responsibility also uh, because they do have situations where a lot of bills are unpaid mm -hmm. and they work with the government. Um, they provide street lighting, for example, yes. also. And the government owes them a lot of money. But, so, but they can't just go and cut off you know, the, 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 the hospitals mm -hmm. or, 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 or you know, with some communities where there has been a lot of stealing of electricity. That has been going on for years. Yes. What they've been doing is working with the government. I think similarly in a situation like this, you can have an arrangement where you know that there are certain things that y you know you have to do mm -hmm. you have to collect the waste yes you know and then you talk about yeah. the the compensation after that so you say that from the NSW's perspective ideally it would want to have to only deal with regulation. regulations right all right so from now until when divestment comes what kind of shape is the MSWMA being put into so that when you get the good news, the transition will be more seamless than would have otherwise been expected? All right. Well, we are, we are still dealing with the collection responsibility that we have right now. So mm. we're not stopping that. Clearly. Um, we're going to get in. We've, over the past two to three years, we've gotten in 42 new trucks. And we're going to get in another 100 this year. Right, on a lease arrangement. So instead of going out and spending quarter million dollars to purchase 12 trucks or 15 trucks, we're, gonna, we're saying, okay, let's lease 100 trucks over three to five years. Because mm -hmm. what we really need is not to own the trucks, yes. but the utility of the trucks. Yes. So we're doing that. Um, in terms of gearing up for, to be a regulatory agency, there's legislation being passed to assist us with that. So there's going to be greater enforcement from our point of view. We're putting legislation in place that is going to move us more towards that. So we have more ability to enforce mm -hmm. um, anti-littering, for example. There's going to be greater fines, you know, significantly greater fines that are in place. And we're structuring the organization internally for that, mm -hmm. for when that day comes. But the truth is that um, I have another two years as chairman and um, I don't know if it's going to be finalized by that time. Well, well don't tell me that, Dennis. Tell me you don't think it's going to be finalized before. <laughs> because here's the thing. As you've yeah. said, since 2013, this process of divestment started. Six years down the line, we're not complete yet. The legislation that needs to be in place for the NSWMA to take on greater or new regulatory powers that legislation, I'm not sure if he's even with it's, the draftsman. Is yeah that man, with the yeah draftsman man. yet? Yeah, man. But this fiscal year, we, we expect that it will yeah, be. That, fine. So the legislation was still not tabled in Parliament yet. And yeah. then in terms of the NSWA's I mean, internal structures, those have not yet been streamlined for no, that. But, so, but, but there's a lot of things to do, to do yeah, in two years. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and then even after the RFP is awarded, yes. it's going to take one to two years for the person to. So, yeah, it's going to be after my tenure. But we are putting everything in place because one of the things that we have been working on at the NSWMA is to ensure sustainability of the governance and the other things that we've put in place because that for us is important. So, you know, as a, as a wise, successful business leader said to me in this, this country one day when I was going to head an organization, a nonprofit, mm -hmm. he said, you can't build everything. Just pick one or two blocks yes. and add it well. And, and that's what we're doing. Yes, yes. <laughs> in, in so far as the organization is concerned, mm -hmm. and I know that you inherited a mess when you yeah. get there, you got there. And it's not to, you know, people are often afraid to talk about things in this way because they say, well, you, you're making Dennis Chung and his directors look like they're heroes coming in to clean up. Well, they are because they inherited a mess. So it is a, it is a fact that you and your team inherited a mess. Insofar as the changing of the structure of the NSWMA, the way it operates is concerned, how would you mark your, ad, your board and the management working with you out of 10 in terms of the progress you've made in trying to change culture, change things? You know, I think they've done very well, if not 11, 10 out of 10. Ah. Yeah, because, I, I, I mean, I proudly received this judge last week. Yes. This is 
the annual report for 2017-18, yes. which includes up-to-date audited financial statements. Yes. And we sent it to the minister. The minister is very proud of it also. He has provided us with a lot of support. But what this is, is this four years ago when we took over the NSLMA, the audited statements were nine to ten years behind mm. for the five entities, mm -hmm. right? Today we're up to date, right? We also have a situation now where we have one of the best corporate governance structures in place in the public sector. Mm -hmm. I can safely say that, right? We have greater control of our, our, our more money coming from our own source revenue, revenues that we earn out there. And importantly, we have a staff satisfaction that is much higher. You, the environment in the organization, the work that we've done internally to, to make the organization a nicer place, the participation that we receive from the staff. Now, people are no longer ashamed of saying, I work at the NSWMA. People proudly are proud to work at the NSWMA. And we see it in the participation and the feedback from the people. So I think we've done very well. We, what, we, what we do also is that we don't try to be everything to everyone. Yes. Right? We went in specifically as a board and said, and I have my last board papers here, what we have is that we focus on six or seven strategic initiatives at a time. As one drops off, we add something else. And because of that, we've been able to do a lot of things internally. The internal audit process, for example, we place a lot of emphasis on that. And um, we have been able to, give you an example, uncover fraud relating to gas cards. Yeah. Where the one, one, I'll give you an example of one truck. Hold the point, hold the point. Give me that example yeah. in the second segment. Yeah. We're here, I'm talking with Dennis Chung, chairman of the National Solid Waste Management Authority in Jamaica. Garbage collection, never a sexy topic. It, it is vitally important to how our country functions. And we have three more segments to hear from Dennis. <laughs>